All right, I'm certainly looking forward to it. As a quick recap, as you might be able to see on the screen currently, it is Randolph Macon versus GMU Gold. The regular season, number one seed, coming back from loser's bracket versus Randolph Macon, the third seed that got all the way to grand finals. This is the grand final match, and as a heads up, because this is grand finals, as far as I'm aware, this is a best of seven, or so I've been told, which means that not only do you get even more Rocket League content, but there is also the opportunity for a bracket reset, meaning that if GMU Gold managed to win the first best of seven, that the bracket resets and that they would need to win a second best of seven to win the tournament. Otherwise, Randolph Macon only needs to win the best of seven once. So there is a possibility for a total of 13 game, wait, 14 games to be played over the course of the next hour or so. Thinking about it, if it's 14 games, that's probably gonna go over an hour. Probably. Yeah, they'll definitely go over an hour now that I'm thinking about it. So, we'll see what happens. I'm definitely looking forward to that kind of stuff. Cause that, that's Rocket League, baby. But we talked about oh. that and not a single point has been scored after a minute and a half of gameplay, which is to be expected. It's grand finals. The highest tier of all the teams are here right now. If there was a shutout kind of game, you know something weird is going on. But Peanut, what are you looking for? What do you, what do you think is going to happen in this one? Who, who do you have your money on? I have my money on GMU Gold, I think. Purely because I think Dame time is such a force to be reckoned with. And I'm not sure Big City Slams will be able to um, answer his uh, insane redirects. But Trixie and... Um, not Snuffle. Trixie and who? Trixie and Pockets. Um, come in screen right when I need you. Um, does have a very solid defense, so they might be able to stop... Um, not my time enough for them to score goals so but i still think it's going to be um i still think it's going to be gmu gold despite big city slams scoring that goal all right well thank you for your input personally i've got my eye my eye on randolph macon yeah they don't have a single player that is quite as standout as dame time but their team play is kind of scary. Like, they have a with a buddy of some sort. Big City Slams, a veteran of the MAEC, known for his team play, his defensive play, his mid play. While he's not a standout, he's still a huge player. And I'm looking forward to seeing how he plays into this grand finals because we've seen him today. He is a force to be reckoned with. Even if dominant time is scarier. So I'm I'm just looking forward to seeing how the teams balance out. Not to mention, as you might be able to guess, Randolph Macon doesn't exactly need to win nearly as many times as GMU in order to win all of it. So it's a little bit different of a mental game. A bit. Though we are approaching the one minute mark with only one goal being scored. Dami time trying to make something happen. Yeah, right now we're just working it through. It is still, yeah, as you just said, one to zero, one minute. A quick demo and then a save by Chinos. Quite honestly, GMU, they must have cooled down during that break more than I thought, because they're not doing much on the side of offense as much as they should be. And that goal just kind of bounced right in. 
from Chino's from the side. There are two defenders there too, which is uh, very, very concerning. Yeah, as I said, the team play from Randolph Macon is scary in and of itself. I love it. Very nice save by- Oh my lord, and Eli with the clap bat finally scoring a goal for GMU. 2-1 with 36 seconds left. Very still doable for GMU. Now, I really like how he shot the ball toward the goal from the left side of it and then shot it in from the right side. <laughs> I don't know how he got there that fast, but he did. Oh, 10 second rule, perhaps. The ball centered. Eli's going in, can't get the rebound. And right now, ball's getting shot through. No defense there. Oh, I'm not sure what happened with the defense there, but Gino going in for another goal. Big C slams going to get past two defenders, and Pockets just kind of funding it in. Pockets putting the ball in his pocket. <laughs> He's just going in. The, there was a bit of an overcommittal on defense for GMU. One of the both members decided to aggressively attack the ball to stop from coming in, and that was the mistake. They got juked, both of them. GMU going for a quick shot in, unfortunately blocked out by Big C. Slams with a far reaching clear, and with two seconds left on the clock, game one of grand finals is going to Randolph make it. Very, All right. very it will be. Game. Now, right back. Yeah, really quickly, we are going to restart the lobby. There's a small error, so we're going to fix that up for a minute. But before that, believe... go ahead and read some of these stats. So on shots, it looks like GMU Gold was, in fact, ahead by quite a bit. There were seven shots Randolph Macon and 11 shots for GMU Gold, which, once again, shows GMU's very strong offense, but... The defense is a little bit lacking. That's all I can say on that one. In terms of yeah, saves, as you might be able to guess by the shot counter, GMU Gold did have less saves than Randolph Macon. Who could have guessed? If more shots with less goals means more saves. Right? Correct. Yeah, and what else is there to say? Randolph Macon played very well the standout player on the side of gmu gold wasn't able to stand out as hard as they could, uh, did before and randolph making out to run away with it and i i genuinely think that's going to be the big deciding factor will randolph make it be able to continue playing their team game their balanced game and keep it going the way they want to uh, did or you... will GMU be able to push out the way they want to with their overpowering offense to keep it playing? Who knows? In any case, what, what was your take on that game, Peanut? What did, what did you see, Robert? Anything I did? Uh, nope, nope. You pretty much covered all of it. Tino's in pockets, uh, putting in uh, significant uh, work in the midfield, big city slams. Didn't get close enough to the goal for Trixie or Chinos to follow up and put it in. So, nope, you pretty much covered all the bases. Uh, GMU Gold is uh, overcommitting on defense a bit too much. They, they're a bit too anti to get on offense. So if they tighten up the defense a bit, I think this should be a pretty a, a more even game, I'll say. Yeah, and granted, it was game one. Both teams had a little bit of cooldown. They weren't fresh off the skillet as some people say. But we're getting into game two now. We're right here, right now. Here we go, game two. And 15 second rule, is it going to be in play? Does not look like it. Looks like it's gonna be a low scoring game this time. Saved by Eli. Now my time's gonna try and push it out. Chino's pockets gonna pick it up. Fox in the put to the midfield. Chino's box. Oh my lord, not my time! Just kill pockets! Uncalled for. But it allows you guys to go in offense, so I'll allow it. 
Yeah, right now it's just a, a mid game, well, game. It's a, it's a mid game. It's a mid game right now. Who who has the better midfield advantage to transition into a goal? That is the game we are playing here. Personally, I think it's Randolph Macon, and as I say it, Randolph Macon goes for a quick goal. Because look at that, all three members of GMU are on defense, and the team play, the nice little pass, Dame Time's there to receive, but he doesn't think that the team is going to do a pass instead of a shot in. One minute now past, one point lead. As much as I hate saying this kind of stuff, what kind of point average, point per minute average, do you think there's going to be for these games? Um, because right now, average half, half, half a goal every minute. Half a goal every minute. So, so one goal every two minutes. That sounds like it might be about right. Yeah. I like, I mean, I like that. I've somehow already forgotten what the exact score was from last game. Uh, 3-1, I want to say. Right, if it's 3-1, then currently the average is a little bit more. It's like 0.75 per minute. Oh, Ooh, what a cool cover. You know, the fucking thing, you can push it out. That was a dangerous position they were in, and a long shot into the goal. In Not stoppable. Hawkins with the redirect from the long shot, managed to get past all three defenders somehow from the midfield. Unfortunate. Three defenders? I think you mean two attackers in the midfielder. Nah, they're defenders. And I looked away for a second. How to go just go, what? <laughs> I don't know, I looked away too. I looked away for one second. I, it was just a tip-off goal then, I guess. Oh, alrighty. Well then, I guess um, average is starting to go up. Average is... It's, a, it's, a, it's about a, it's about a 1.0 right now. Yeah, 1.0. The third minute just started, and we're at three minutes for this game. Or three goals for this game, not three minutes. Almost there, though. Almost, almost. But it does look like GMU slowly starting to warm up to Randolph Macon's playstyle. Are indeed. Oh, and man, just to get over Trixie to tie it up. 2-2 two, two at the 2.30. Tied up at the halfway marker. Exactly the halfway mark. Yeah, very nice little bump up by Rye right there, securing the goal in where no one could stop it. GMU is just starting to warm up. And they win the tip-off. They're in a very good position now with their offense where they is. Trixie... Pulling it all the way out, followed by Pockets trying to get it deep into Orange side. It's currently centering up, but a little bit too high. Rye trying to clear it. Eli trying to clear it even further. Big City pushing it all the way back out. Stopped by one person, but Big City is still there to grab it. Dame's not trying to push toward the center. Pockets is there to defend against Eli. He does manage to do so. Rye's coming up second. Unable to stop the ball from being pushed over to the middle. Dame, though, actually misses out on it this time. Big Seed Slams is going in for the offense. Right launches it out of his hands. Over to Eli. Back to Trixie. Still in the corner. Trying to try and make something happen here. Dame time pushes it out. Tino's in pockets. Goes for a goal. Launched over to Big City Slams. Big City Slams is going to go on defense. Trixie pushes it out. Rye grabs up in the corner. That very dangerous position just now is done with one of GMU's players going for the ball, missing, and then deciding to continue all the way down the line for more boost. He's glad. I hope he was glad the ball was high up in the air because he left his two teammates alone to defend against three. All right, GMU's going in for the ball. Someone uh, ride demoed pockets and just almost going over Eli Bailey by managed to. Grab the ball, it's going to pick up by Pockets, and Pockets from the top left corner is going to be able to somehow get into the goal. 
What do you mean somehow? He just he just shot it straight in. That wasn't even a trick shot. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't. He somehow got into the goal. That was just in. <laughs> oh, we're gonna keep going. Forty-five seconds remaining with Randolph Macon on advantage by one point it's no one's game yet since there's plenty of time but they are looking to get a two point lead in this set all right game lead. in the midfield point. he picked up by tino's and pockets Brian's gonna pick up the ball it's gonna go to pockets again the high from the can happen dame time blocks it over on the side of rmc basically slams is far away from the ball but he has two defenders he's all right Oh, it's, uh, Jimmy needs to make something happen right now. Doesn't Ball's still up in the air. It's on the side. Are we going to get an overtime here? No, I was getting launched out. No. Nope. and Pockets can try to spike it down, and that is the game. That is it. Randolph Megan takes game two, leading them forward with a 2 0 game lead. Looking at the stats, GMU once again with a sizable shot lead. With Randolph Macon having actually only a two save lead this time. That's much closer than the previous match. So, you know, good good on GMU. They're they're slowly closing the gap. They gotta close it a little bit faster though. They don't want to be sitting on match point for three consecutive matches. They gotta get a win in this game. Otherwise, Randolph Macon is gonna be sitting very very pretty for the entire rest of the set. And quite frankly, I'd be terrified of that. That being said, though, GMU's not taking prisoners. They see that opportunity. They take it, and the 15-second rule is applying. It's going to be a high-scoring game this time. So jumping in, here's the tip-off. Once again, it goes onto the side of GMU's favor. Immediately launched out, though, by Randolph Macon. It's a dead ball near the goal. No one able to capitalize on it. Tracy pushing it out. I don't think anyone is on the defense on blue side. A long ball could be devastating. Eli pushing it in. Unfortunately, not the best angle, but multiple players on the side of blue pushing it forward. Randolph Macon going for a little bit of more aggressive offense than they usually do. Instead, Rai is moving it toward this, toward their offense. Pockets receives, stops the goal in, clears it to the other corner entirely. Rai has to go and pick it up afterwards. And once again, we can see from a very nice angle, a mid-position defender on the sides of Randolph Macon. They do this incredible thing where they commit two people and have a third sitting back in the center of the field, waiting for a lineup waiting for an opportunity to either defend or push the ball in and they make it work it's a very balanced decision very balanced option oh my lord top bar so close and right man just save the ball at the last second before they get to the rebound yeah big booty just coming in Big City Slam. Chino's actually wow. this shot in. I think he just, like, manages to slow the ball enough so he would mistime it. Yeah, I think that's what happened. He, like, slightly redirected it. Wow, that was actually insane. Yeah, and now it's tied. One-to-one -one at 320. I think that's the fastest two goals we've seen. I For this so well. I could be wrong, though. I don't have photographic memory, unfortunately. Kind of wish I did, though. That'd be really cool. Photographic memory is pretty sick. Shout out anyone that has photographic memory. I've never met anyone with it. Not sure if it's actually real, but dang, I wish it was. All right. Domitian's going to try to accept what happened in the midfield. Rice going to pick up the ball. He's going to put it in the corner. He's going to try and center it. Chino's the pocket. He's going to knock it out. Oh, Dame going in for the shot. Oh, my Lord. 
That was a slick corner slide in. And Dami Time just ramming it into the goal. Yeah, he just, you know, stops it a little bit early, pushes it into the corner, and secures GMU's lead. All right, Tears of Pocket is going to bring the ball down to the corner. He's going to try and center it up. Eli is going to push it out. It's going to go to Trixie. Trixie's going to pass it to Dame Time. Dame Time's going to get it to the midfield. Gino's going to block it, keeping up the pressure. It's going to go for a goal. Eli's going to block it. It's launched all the way over. It goes a little bit too high, and they're going to go for the rebound. A little bit. And the ball just kind of blocks it. I'm not entirely sure what Trixie was doing. It looked like he was going for a, a scoring his own goal. Yeah, this is a real big scramble in the center of the goal right there. GMU Gold saying, hey, we're not out of it yet. We want this game. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And a very quick break from GMU to, not even, to score another goal from at 4-1, the two-minute mark. Yeah, but, I mean, it's still no one game yet. Anyone can be going with it. Two minutes left on the clock. I can definitely see Randolph Macon getting three goals. I can no longer see Randolph Macon getting four goals in two minutes at this rate. That's... Is that the second tip-off goal? I think that's the second tip-off goal. In a row? Yes. Woo-wee. That, that is a little bit unfortunate. Randolph Macon's kind of just losing their grip on the game. I think I think they lost their grip like two goals ago. No, no, no. They still had it. It's just very, very suddenly they lost the goal, their grip, violently. It got ripped out of their hands. Thankfully, they're, still, they're stopping it a little bit more now. GMU's picking up their slack, but Randolph Macon is adapting. They're slowly figuring out what they were doing wrong. And I think it might have just been a oh. bad setup. That one, we're going to have to watch the replay because I'm not quite sure how that one was missed. Big City Slams missed a uh, going for it. Oh, sorry. Pockets missed a, uh, an aerial going for it, and it just uh, sailed right into the goal. Yeesh. Why is it that, like, all the goals that are just upsetting are the ones that you don't think should have happened. Like the long, super long shots where it's only you know, missed is because of the fact that they were in like the worst possible spot. It, it'd be like that. Oh my lord, GMU is just running away with this game. It is 7 to 1 right now at one minute. You think they're trying to beat the record for most goals scored by a single team in a game? I, I think I think the most is nine that I've seen. I think nine is the current record for our tournaments. I don't think we have ever seen the double digits, but this might be the game. They're getting pretty close. You know, yeah, I don't think we've ever seen double digits in our tournaments in any game. Yeah. So, yeah, that... I'm not saying I want to see them break a record, because, like, this is demoralizing. This is... Yikes. 8-1, 45 seconds left. That's a big yikers right here. This is, uh... I... I'm not sure. Oh, my lord! Eli with an absolutely amazing redirect. Randolph, what are you doing? GMU is just pulling all the stops out in this game. It's center field, but the one who's supposed to receive got demolished by Trixie. Mixing Sand is bringing it out. Bach is trying to redirect, unable to. Uh, 
Okay. All right, I was holding my breath waiting for something to happen. Thankfully, Randolph Macon is in fact still playing the game. They are indeed. So they're they're showing us they're not done playing the game. They're still there. They they're just giving up one of the games to them. They don't want it to be a 4-0 in grand finals, right? 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 Right. Right. Oh, That's so close. <laughs> but GMU is going to take this game. Oh my, I have to see how many scores. Oh my god, 14 shots against Randolph making six. Doubled their scores, or doubled their shots, I should say. Yeah, and only five saves. Again, saved every other what, shot. They're, they're nine? They're nine saves? Like, GMU Gold really turned up the heat in the last, like, two, two three minutes of this match. I don't know what happened. But they have a fire lit under them. I'm gonna. I am curious to see what happens in this uh, in this game. Let's see if they're still gonna ride that momentum from uh, last match. Yeah, it looks like we got a little bit of a slow start this game. It actually looks like top left that Tracy joined the game after it started. I'm glad nothing bad happened because of that. But here's All our right. 15 second rule is not in effect this game. I will mention that once again, the 15 second rule did apply to the previous one. There was a goal scored in the first 15 seconds and then 11 goals were scored in the game. So I'm not saying that the rule is infallible. I'm just saying it's never been wrong. <laughs> I've just never seen it been proven wrong. I'm just, I'm just saying. Exactly. And a quick reminder to everyone watching this tournament, this is Grand Finals, meaning that this is a best of seven match with a bracket reset included. Randolph Macon is currently at two wins, and George Mason is currently at one, meaning that there is still plenty of time for George Mason to bring it back. Speaking of bringing it back, Diamond Time's gonna pick up the ball, it's gonna put it in the corner. Unable to make anything happen. Rai's gonna try and center it up from mid, and no one's there to pick it up. Diamond Time's gonna try to put it in the shot. It's blocked. Eli still keeping up the pressure. Blocked by Big City Slam! It's all blocked! I guess he's in, but Tracy manages to knock it out of the goal at the last second! Tracy, you legend. I could I could see so much less of the ball than I could the shape <laughs> holographic it's in the goal. <laughs> oh my lord, that was incredibly close. All right, Tracy's gonna bring it down towards the midfield. It's gonna be picked up by Rye. Big City Slam is gonna try to make something happen. She knows in pockets, bringing it down towards the mid. It's gonna go high and wide. And pockets heading back to the defense as best they can. They are out of boost though, not quite anymore. They're going refilling back up for a bit more defense. GMU is applying their offense. However, it went a little bit too high and a little bit too far. So there was no ability to capitalize on it. Eli, though, coming in, trying to hit it out. Sent over by another teammate. Rye trying to push on to it. Unfortunately, misses the ball due to interference from Randolph Macon. And uh, halfway through, no goals this game. And this is this is where they score right here, right? Come to experience? No. False. <laughs> like I dare say um, incorrect. Rye is gonna keep up pressure. It's gonna be passed to Chinos in the pockets. Dalmay Time's gonna pick up the ball, pass to Rye. Rye's gonna knock it down all the way into the corner. Maybe he can set it up for a mid. Dalmay Time's is gonna go for a goal. He's gonna get in somehow. Far down. First goal at one minute. 55 seconds. Yeah, just a clean top shot bounces down at a very surprising angle. No one's able to receive it. All right. All right. Ball does not quite go neutral. It actually sails into orange side a little bit. Randolph making unable to quite capitalize on it. 
Eli trying to push in a little bit further, blocked off by Randolph making good save by Dominic Tom, immediately followed up by a save by Eli. Two shots, two saves. Eli's gonna try to make something happen. It's blocked by Chinos and Pockets. Rise still keeping up the pressure, but it's knocked out by Pockets. Ball standing up again. Dominic Tom going in. Absolutely no one defending for a 2-0 lead at 117. And uh, just like the last, Dami Time somehow getting it barred down and just kind of rolling in. Dami Time some, just getting these absolutely insane shots. It really is. Another neutral side ball immediately bounced onto blue side. Clearing out towards center. Pockets going in and almost no one there to defend. Rye, however, gets there just in the nick of time. Tracy, uh, tr Tracy, Tracy, P, you up uh, the pressure. It's not to Riley. Riley. Oh my god, I'm just messing up everyone's names right now. Take a breath. <laughs> Dominic Time still keeping up the pressure. And pass to Eli for the rebound and manages to score 3 0 at 54 seconds. RMZ has scored no goals yet. This might be blowout, another blowout of the game. GMU really has just turned up the heat. Yeah, GMU's looking for that bracket reset. They heard that the other side of this tournament starts at four, and they said, hey, how far can we push it back? Let's yeah. throw the first two games. All right, we'll only give them a buffer of two. Let's hit the bracket reset, and then let's give them three games. <laughs> let's make it run till five o'clock. If that happens, I'm going to be mildly upset at that fact. Because we do have other people that do need to play. And they nah. go. Now, granted, like I'm not going to say that I'm going to be mad if it happens. Because it's good Rocket League content for that kind of stuff. But, like at that point, why didn't you just win the first two in the first place? Oh my lord! Dame time! Did he, did he do a wheel reset midair? Oh my lord, uh, yes he did. Somehow getting awful reels while underneath the ball. Huh. Dami oh, yeah. just styling on them. Oh, oh my lord. <laughs> one more point? Not one more point. We're going into game four with a 2-2 two -two tie on total games in this set. Actually, no, we're going to game five. That was game four. That was game four. This is game... Yeah, this is game five. Yeah, and look at these shot differences. On GMU Gold, there's a three-shot difference? I gotta do math now. Nine shots for Randolph Macon, and 12 shots for GMU Gold. So three-shot difference. And in terms of saves, it's actually really close. Only one more save for Randolph Macon. GMU Gold stepping up their defensive game. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not really sure what happened to GMU Gold in those first two games. I don't know. They maybe they brought their big brothers to play for them. I'm not really sure what happened, but this is looking like a completely different team from the first two games that we saw in this uh, series. Yeah, maybe you know. Maybe Chat's right. Maybe GMU's throwing just throwing for content. <laughs> They they just buy oh my god Dame time with a quick first goal perhaps not quite okay maybe no when Rice gonna pick up the goal anyway <laughs> this is incredible GMU suddenly hit that warm up they they were cold for two straight games they they left the door open on a twenty degree day and said all right let's play Rocket League. And after the second game, the coach let them close that door. <laughs> Their minds are warm. They're ready to play some Rocket League. And they are not going to let Randolph make it stop them anymore. Rai demoing Chino. Rai almost putting in a goal blocked by Big City Slam. Eli's going to pick up the ball. Pass to Big City Slams, which... I can't even keep up anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I literally can't even. The ball is switching between players so fast. Yeah, right, basically, Slams is going to pick it up and try to go for a goal. It's blocked by Rai. Rai is going to bring it down towards the midfield. 
Center up. Pick. Oh, I'm not sure who that was. It's all good at this point. Like, they're just, they're schmoving, some might even say. They are schmoving. I don't think the ball has touched the ground in a while. Oh, but there they go in another shot immediately rocketed out of the way by Eli. Whew. This is some gameplay right here. A one point lead seems a little bit more like a grand finals kind of match, if I do say so myself. Bucket setting it out all the way over to Orange side. He's looking to make a move. Big City Slams trying to do some setup. Same with Tracy. But unfortunately, no moves can be made. GMU is just applying too much pressure as Eli does it again. Forces the ball in with three minutes left on the clock. He's moving. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Uh -oh. <laughs> what happened? I was going for a second. I was watching the whole time, too. It was. I was wow, just talking. The I'm in. All of a sudden, all I can get out is, oh, no. Just, oh, no. <laughs> it's all right, though. Randolph Bacon's coming back on this. They just need a moment. If they can mental reset, I'm sure that they'll be fine. The problem is, kinda... they have to mentally reset. <laughs> mentally <laughs> resetting is kind of hard. When you're playing against GMU, whose mental game is he he in, in, in. But All right, well, you can reset that... the This really might be that reset they need. They still have half the game left to get all these goals. They just might be. This really might be a bracket reset. All right, Ryan's gonna pick up the ball. He's gonna keep up the momentum. All right, it's in the corner, it's dead. Ryan's gonna center it up, and Dame Time's gonna pick it up for another goal at the 219 mark. That is four to one. Don't worry, there's still a chance for Randolph making to make it. And even if not, we get more Rocket League content. Bracket resets. Always fun for everyone at all times. And <laughs> somehow just managed to get into that top right corner. Wow. So All one. right. I Neutral start. Rise coming in for an aerial. Uh, kind of went a bit over. Uh, Eli's going to pick it up. He's going to pass to Big City Slams. Big City Slams going to pick it up and keep up the pressure. Uh, Eli gets past two defenders. Puts it center. And... There's just a huge scramble right now. All right, Trixie's gonna pass it over to GMU's side. Eli's gonna try and receive it. It goes a bit over. James Spikers gonna center it up, and right man just to save the ball at the last second. Trixie's trying to push it out, is unable to. It's center ball. It gets knocked over. Oh, another shot in this time blocked out by Rye. Big City Slams out there trying to play a 3v1. Pocket setting it up to be a high ball. Pushed over to a little bit far too far to the side. Big City Slams going ahead and setting it up again. Rye blocking it out. At this time, I'm not even sure which team is on offense or defense. Both are just hitting the ball. And that's the one to six. 50 seconds left. 
if 10 seconds per goal is manageable, then Randolph Macon can get it back. But if we consider the fact that their current point average is one every four minutes, then it's not looking very good for Randolph Macon, and they're going to have to bet on the next two games to turn it around. Yeah, I don't, I don't think this is a. Uh... Ooh, Eli with the demo and Big City slams. Tino's trying to make something happen in the midfield. Kind of lost the ball midway through that. Eli's gonna push it out. It's gonna be received by Big City Slams. Big City Slams gonna put it back towards mid. Dominic Time's gonna push it out. He's gonna try and go for a goal. It's blocked by Big City Slams. All right, five seconds remaining. This game is absolutely going to GMU. And we are moving in to game six and a potential bracket reset for GMU. Yep. Whenever the ball lands, there we go. <laughs> All right. And game five goes to GMU. They are one game away from a bracket reset. Look at the amount of shots GMU has. That's, what, 14 shots? Yeah, that's 14. Versus Randolph's Macon's 11. Yes, 11. <laughs> yeah. This is, yeah. That's kind of just how it's been going. GMU yep. shooting every single shot they can. Randolph Macon's doing the same, but GMU's suddenly showing up on defense. Yeah, also the amount of saves that um, GMU had were just like nearly double the amount of uh, that Randolph Bacon had. So if Randolph Bacon might be able to clean up their defense, they might be able to get back into this. But if, uh, if they're able, if GMU goal is just able to uh, continue to keep up that pressure and keep getting those shots and it's looking like a bracket reset. Oh, oh, and RMC managed to score the first goal. Chino's in pockets right off the rip. Is this, this is going to be a high-scoring goal? High-scoring yeah, game? That, this is going to be a high-scoring game. Roll 15-second rule. Got to say, though, that's a little bit of a momentum shift with Randolph Macon being the one to score the first goal. Then again, the 15-second rule is not biased. All they say is, if you score a goal in the first 15, it is a high-scoring game. It does not say if you score the first goal that you will score a lot of times. It's just the game itself will be high-scoring. Hmm. Speaking of which, James the Pockets trying to make something happen in the midfield. Launches over to the side of GMU. Faces him trying to receive it. Unable to. Rise is going to push it back out. Rise also going to demo Trixie. Still on the side of GMU. Almost get, uh, almost in. Domitai manages to uh, get it out of the corner. It's going to be received by Chino's in pockets, who's going to pass to Domitai. Domitai's going to put it back towards RNC, but it's blocked by Big City Slams. Big City Slams going for an aerial, trying to make something happen, but it's blocked by Eli. Yeah, one minute's gone by, and there haven't been more than three goals. What's going on? Honestly, I like this game a little bit more than the previous ones. Like, high-scoring games are fun and all, yeah. But at the same time, when a game scores really high, it feels like a blowout. And in Grand Finals, you don't want a blowout. You want as close as it possibly can be. I am, uh, I am enjoying this game a lot more. It is uh, it's, it's less, of a, uh, less of a scramble. But GMU is still trying to make this something happen right now. But it is pushed out by Big City Slam. Zombie Time's going back. Just going under Eli. Received by Trixie. Zombie oh. Time running some interference. Rai is able to pick it up. Bounces off the wall. Eli's going to try and center it. Gets past one defender. Gets past two defenders. Zombie Time misses the goal. But it's still up in the air. And it's pushed out by Trixie finally. That was a very stressful moment right there. 
Like that that could have been really bad for Randolph Macon, but thankfully, solid defense, little mistakes on the side of GMU. Yeah, RMC has really tightened up the defense this match. But not enough as Dummy Time just scored another goal. And that is 1-1 one, one at just the halfway point. Two minutes, 28 seconds left. Let's see if something happens in these first 10 seconds. Shot over to the side of GNU. Immediately shot over to RMC. Domitan's going to go in for something. It is boxed out, and it's an open goal. And the ball just rolls in. Chinos and pockets. All right. Getting past all three defenders. All right. Randolph Macon is coming back. They've got a lead. They lost it for a moment, but they're putting it back together. It's only a one point lead. Yeah, it's not at the same as GMU's incredibly dominating leads that they had a moment ago. But at the same time, a lead. Just lead. I was oh, in the my lead. Lord. Or not. It did not save. That was an incredibly good tactical demo. Yo. I don't... I'm not sure who Eli demoed there, but... Big brain. Ooh, I'm not yeah. sure what camera angle is in. <laughs> That's, that was odd. I, that was a fun-looking angle. I kind of like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what, is, what is happening? Someone on production is playing with their mouse. They're playing with the the options. I don't mind it. This looks kind of fun. We get to see. Oh, we get to see pocket. Whoa! <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, I don't see really that again. That was a fun ride. Put me in VR right. and let me watch the game like that. Woo! Oh, now we're back to the regular show. That's fine. And Big City Slam puts in another goal. All right, Trixie puts it up, Cheeto puts it down, and Pity Slam, Pixie Slam picks it up. 3-2 at the 133 with uh, RMC uh, leading by one. I'm still kind of just like riding on the hee <laughs> hee really funny angles. That was very fun. It was very fun. It kind of Not made us stop watching the game for a good bit. So, you know, to pay attention to that a bit more. Such as Big City Slams aiming for a goal blocked out by Eli. This time, Rai is actually moving forward toward this shot, trying to get up something put together. Pockets, though, setting up for no one able to rec receive, unfortunately. Quick demo on the Dame means one less offense. Tracy pushed out Eli and, ooh, never mind. Pockets pushed it back out over to the single defender, Dame. Is he going to be able to stop them? Looks like he will be able to at least slow them down. Ball's floating in the air. Received by Rai. Bounces off the corner. Eli now has it, putting in the center field. Immediate demo. Apparently also a shot got stopped. 30 seconds remaining. Randolph making it scrambling to keep their advantage. But Dame time with one defender right there. Puts it in the corner, unable to center it. Chino's is going to push it out. It's going to be received by Eli. Oh, my lord. That is so close. Trixie's going to try and receive it, but it's blocked by Dame time. There are 10 seconds left. Can GNU score a goal? Rai trying to make something happen. Eli's going to receive it. The ball's still up in the air. There's still a chance, but I don't think anyone's going to receive it. Rai's there to receive it. And the ball is down, and Randolph making take. Game six. It is now three to three in this best of seven match. If Randolph Macon wins this game, they will end the tournament, essentially. They will be the winner of grand finals. That'll be it. And we'll be very quickly moving on to the capital division. If GMU can you gold, get a bracket reset, though. Yeah, if GMU gold wins... We're going to be here for at least another 30 minutes for more Rocket League content as GMU aims for their spot at the top.
They're fighting for it. They were first seed when they started this tournament, and they want to stay there. They want that back. Ooh, big city slams going in for the demo on Ride. Down tries to then pick up the ball. He's going to try and center it, but there are three defenders there. Gets past one, can't get past the second one. Cheeto's going to pick up the ball. He's going to try and center it. No, big city slams is going to pick it up. He's going to pass to Trixie. Trixie's going to try and aerial towards the goal. And it's blocked by Eli, sending it way over. Big city is going to pick it up. He's going to redirect it towards blue side or uh, orange side. Dom is going to pick up the ball to the corner. Three defenders. Past one. Past two. No one's there to pick up the ball. Launched out and redirected by Eli. Oops, shot towards the goal. Blocked out by Rye this time. Tracy picking it up. Eli going ahead and receiving it. It's just a... This feels like badminton right now. Ball's floating up in the air. No one's really stopping it. But Pockets pushes it in, and the defenders are in no position to stop it. Yeah, I'm not really sure what happened there. The ball just kind of looked like it was, like, rolled off their top. Both the... Yeah. Oh, they both went to defend. And it yeah, they both, so no one got it. That's an unfortunate occurrence. Quite. Oh, no. Go to his... That ball was just slowly floating toward the goal. Thankfully, it got stopped. But once again, Randolph Macon is on defense. A quick demo onto Dame stops the little bit of offense that they had. Unfortunately, no big clear occurs. And GMU is put back on the front foot until this happens. And all of a sudden, uh, no, there it goes, back on the back foot. All right, yeah, he was going to knock it out. It's going to be reduced by choosing the pocket. Dom Tide's going to get a contest. He's going to win. He's past one defender. Can't get past the second one. Trixie's going to pick it up. Pass to Pocket. Pocket's going to launch it over. Trixie's going to try and get the rebound. Unable to basically say, I'm trying to get that rebound. Unable to. And that's two defenders out. Right. This is the wall aerial. It's going to be received by Chinos and Pockets. Dom Tide's going to try and contest. It went neutral. And Pockets finally launched it out of blue side. And Big City... There's a lot going on. There's a lot going on. <laughs> it, it, he's right in the halfway mark. Randolph Megan does have the one point lead. Very similar to last game, actually. But it's going to be a little bit slow at the moment. Randolph Megan's done something to help their, their team play. While GMU is just going to keep applying their pressure. Very close shot by Pockets right there. Eli managed to stop it. Tracy pushing it in now. It's centered up if anyone's there to receive it. Unfortunately, Eli managed to clear it away. Pockets pushes it back out and gets demoed at the same time. I'd say that's a good time for a demo. Pushed in immediately by Big City Slams. Two-point lead at the two-minute mark. The 2-2-0-0-0. The, the all right, there's still two minutes left. That's a goal per minute. That's still very doable for GMU. They just need to find their opening. Yeah, and it's been very clear that they know how to do that. Though That being said, the majority of the games that we saw where they just started absolutely smashing were all tip-off goals. And whoo! Monkey noise. And, and incredibly close by Rai, but it's blocked by Big C Slams. Eli is going to knock out the ball. It went neutral, unable to pick up the rebound. Big City Slam just going to center it. And it's knocked out by Rye. Is anyone there to defend? It's top bar. It's knocked up by Pockets. Eli manages to get to the ball first, but it's blocked. Knocked way over by Rye. Eli's going to try and center it. It's picked up by Dame. Dame, Dame is going to knock it off the wall. And it's redirected by Rye for a goal. Their first goal. And there is one minute and 12 seconds remaining. Yeah, and it's exactly what I was talking about, finding their opportunity. Yeah, this is where Randolph Macon needs to be really careful. Because right here, the tip-off is where GMU absolutely dominated them before. Their, their tip-off game is super super strong 
If Rando can get away from this position and push it back into a neutral game, then they could probably stall it out for the next minute. Oh my lord! Trixie going in for a shot. I'm not sure what happened there. It looked like it might have been blocked, but no one got the credit for it. Valentine's gonna knock it into the corner. Big C, uh, Chino and Pocket's gonna pass the Big City slams. The Big City is gonna put it in the goal. For the three one with 38 seconds left. 38 seconds, two point lead. GMU isn't out of it yet, but this is the stress point. Randolph Macon might be sweating right now because they just need to hold that lead and they are in the scariest position yet. It looked like RMC finally managed to do that mental reset as they are managing to hold on to these very slight leads that they have. And just barely able to hold on. Trixie blocking Rice shot. She has the pockets putting into the corner. Eli's going to receive it. Right, push right trying to center it. 10 seconds left. If a goal isn't scored right now and it doesn't look like it is, this is Grand Finals. The winner of and... the DMV Spring Summit Rocket League Challenger Division Tournament is going to be Randolph Macon College. Congratulations to them. Congratulations to every team that made it this. These were some incredible games.